when I started developing games, there is one big problem that affects many game developers. It affects me since the beginning, whether you're a beginner or intermediate, a bit less when you're advanced, but mostly beginner intermediate. And that problem is related to the Valley of Despair. If the Valley of Despair is that moment when you reach an extreme resistance to reach your goal. And you will meet this first when you learn game development. So you will learn or do a few tutorials, you will feel good about it, you will feel confident about it, and very quickly you will hit a really big wall where just the amount of knowledge that you have is not enough and you see everything you need to know to be able to finish whatever you wanted to do. And sometimes at this moment, game developers, they either think, okay, this is not for me, I will switch to this engine. And then they start this initial curve again and they hit the same wall. And then once they reach there, they say, oh, maybe this engine was also not for me, I'll switch back to this engine. And then they start again from the beginning and do that. And then, or maybe they, they hit the wall so many times they think, okay, game development is not for me, I will actually do this activity. But the curve is the same. The curve is the same for everyone. The Valley of Despair is a natural place to go through and game development is hard, you hit the wall. Now, if you pass this wall, you will still hit a, another wall, which is not to confuse with game development, but with the genre that you are uh, trying to uh, create. So when you build a game, you might think to yourself, I'm going to build a first person game as my first game. You start developing and you will hit the wall. The value of despair is everywhere. And you might find it difficult. You might thought, okay, it's actually more work than I anticipated. Uh, there's so much work on animation for the hands, there's so much work for, for guns, uh, all the reloading, all the interactions with doors and grabbing objects and so on. Yeah, that's, that's the wall that you are facing when you do a first person game. So then you might think, okay, I build a small prototype, I will not finish it, that's fine. Oh, I like racing games, I'm going to build a racing game. So you start, you feel good about it, your car is moving, your car is driving, you have maybe other AI cars driving as well, and then you hit the wall of optimizing the race physics, okay? The cars, they have suspensions, brakes, they accelerate, they have gears, um, they have pops and bangs and different places. It's, it's a lot of work for very, very small detail, but these details are needed because when you check all the racing games, every game has those cool effects. So you hit against the wall against racing games. Then you think of yourself, okay, maybe, Actually, I'm going to do um, a platformer. There are so many platformers. I think platformer might not be that difficult. And then you start building your platformer and then you are like, okay, I spent already six months on this. You hit your wall. Your game is nowhere close to looking how Hollow Knight looks or another uh, Celeste or other pixel art thing. And you wonder why. And yeah, that's the wall you are hitting. But you see the problem? The value of despair comes all the time. But every time you switch genre, you are starting from the beginning as, again. You need to learn new things about that genre. All the programming and the art and what the player expects is different from genre to genre. And this is making your learning starting always from zero and you will always hit the same wall. Every genre focuses on a specific aspect of the gameplay and that aspect is the core. And whatever genre you, you choose, there will be this big wall that you have to pass. And if you don't pass that wall and you switch genre, you start from the beginning. It will not basically help you. Sometimes you see a game developer doing always the same types of games and they move at a much faster space because, well, they pass the initial value of despair issue. So this is one of the solution for, for fighting this. It's like pick a genre, and build your next five games or next 10 games in that genre. Like focus on really a genre that defines you, your brand, your personality, and so on. And I know that's tough because when you start out, you don't really know what you want to build. People oftentimes gravitate to platformers because this seems the easier thing to do. Most tutorials are about platformers and so on, but that might not necessarily be a good advice. So. Just pick a genre if you are, that you are passionate about, that you really love, and stick on that genre until you pass that wall. If you really want to pass that wall, maybe you just want to build a game here, build a game there, and you don't really care if you reach that resistance point. But if you really want to break past this part, it might be better to just stick with one style and push it through until you are master of this thing. So just to conclude, 
the value of this pair will arrive no matter what and it arrives you know, at a macro scale for the entire game development activity. But then within game development, every smaller thing also has its own learning curve, value of despair, and then you go past that. Especially for picking which genre you want to work on. So pick one genre and do it a few times. Don't start from zero every six months or from zero every year. This actually might hurt your progress more than anything else. This is an advice I want to apply for myself. The challenge is still, okay, which genre do I really want to dedicate a few games on? But we will see. And maybe this will help some of you to also improve your game development skills. Just by being a bit more focused on, on what you develop on, you will improve much better, I think. So this is me rambling about game development. Some of those discussions are coming from the feedback form I published earlier. And uh, I thank you if you uh, submit things. I'm reading everything and see what I can plan here and there. Leave a comment below if you want to talk about something else or you like this kind of, of talking head video. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you next time and go work on your game.